Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our narrow band O2 sensor as well as our field trim adjustments and our closed loop operation. Now, our narrow band O2 simulation is going to allow us to take our wide band that we have wired into our ECM link already for tuning purposes and repurpose it for closed loop correction and control. So normally we'd have a narrow band sensor, it's fitted to the O2 sensor housing. We can use that for typical short and long term closed loop adjustments. Now with the narrow band simulation, we actually can remove the narrow band sensor. We can put our wide band sensor in that O2 housing location or in the downpipe location and we're able to use that for the same kind of closed loop. So it's going to be taking a look at the scale of the wide band from a zero to five volt scale. It's going to shrink it down and take a look at, let's say, two and a half volts. That might be 14.7 or stoichiometric on the wide band. It's going to look at that and use that for short and long term operations at idle and part throttle, just as it would with the factory narrowband sensor. So it's a really trick feature. We're going to cover how to do that in this video, as well as taking a look at our O2 adjustments and control. So when we're in operating in closed loop and we have our short term adjustment, there's going to be a certain amount of feedback rate and a certain amount of adjustment rate we can go in and work with. When we use the narrowband O2 simulation, oftentimes if our O2 sensor is put downstream in the downpipe, so it's not in the factory O2 housing location, it can start to skew how the ECU is going to be looking at that air, uh, air fuel report it coming back in, and it can cause all kinds of closed loop operation problems. We're going to go over how to work with that and some things we need to adjust when we're going in and working with this narrowband simulation. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at our narrow band O2 simulation as well as some of our short term adjustment rates in our calibration file here with our ECM link. So if we're trying to have our closed loop operation and we don't want to work with our front O2 sensor, so the front O2 sensor has been replaced or it's damaged and we have a wide band installed, we're able to repurpose the wide band input for not only looking for logging purposes to guide us in our full throttle tuning, but we can use it in our closed loop tuning as well. So we can actually use it for a short and long term adjustment, just as we would with the factory narrowband primary O2 sensor. So let's take a look at how to set this up and how we're going to work with this. Now, normally the primary O2 sensor is going to be a zero to one volt scale. It's going to be very limited scale and a half a volt is going to equate to 14.7 to one. So if it's either above or below that in that zero to one volt scale of that half volt range, it'll be making its adjustments with the short and the long terms trying to get our fuel mixture back in line. Now when we have a wide band, we have a zero to five volt scale. So we're gonna have an issue there because we have a much larger voltage scale and it's not gonna be compatible. So what ECM Link has done is rewrite some of the factory code so we can take that zero to five volt scale and make it usable for narrow band simulation with our wide band. It sounds like it's complicated, it's actually really, really simple. So in order to set this up, thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.